Hello. Welcome to Accounting Concepts for Managers. This is Module 1, Basic Accounting Concepts. Let me give you a broad picture. Accounting. Accounting is the business of recording a company's transactions and, at the end of a period, communicating that information to interested parties. These interested parties are also called users. Who are these users, these interested parties? Interested parties are those who have a stake in the company's financial health. These parties could be investors, because they invested money in the business and are interested in if they'll get dividends. They can be creditors, because they loan money and are very interested in ensuring that they get repaid. They could be government agencies. And of course, the most famous government agency of all, the IRS, who'd be very interested in your business profits. Before we go on, though, I want to give you a broad feel for accounting. Overall, accounting can be broken very broadly into two categories. They are financial accounting and managerial accounting. What's the difference? Financial accounting caters for external users. That's the key word, people outside the company. Managerial accounting deals with internal users. Key word, internal. That's managers within the company. This difference is very important. You'll see that as we progress with the course. From a work perspective, accounting can also be classified into public accounting and private accounting. You may have heard these terms before. What's the difference between public accounting and private accounting? Public accounting mainly relates to the work of auditors. Auditors, of course, do auditing, and they also provide advice on tax, and they also act as management consultants. Prior to the Enron fiasco, an auditor could do all three. Now they can only do one. If they do auditing, they can't do consultancy, and if they do consultancy, they can't do auditing. What is private accounting? This relates to the work of accountants working in industry. They could be doing the following. What's popularly referred to as general accounting, that is recording transactions and keeping the company's books. They could be doing cost accounting, which deals with costing of a company's products and services, preparing budgets, analyzing actual performance, comparing it with the budget, and reporting significant variances to managers. Private accountants could also deal with accounting information systems. This involves setting up systems to ensure that appropriate controls are set up to prevent or identify fraud or error. This particular branch, Accounting Information Systems, has really grown in the last couple of years. Now it's also called Forensic Accounting. Let me tell you a real-life example. Let me tell you the story of Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor worked for the FBI. 
Tom Taylor's job at, at the FBI has changed. He used to pack a .357 Magnum pistol. Now he wields a number two pencil and a notebook computer. Taylor is a forensic accountant, somebody who sniffs through company books to ferret out white collar crime. The demand for forensic accountants has really surged in the past few years. The qualifications are you have to have a CPA and you have to have some experience with government agencies. I spent a long time on accounting information systems. Let me go to the last, which is internal auditing. Internal auditor is like a watchdog which sniffs around and checks the company's books and activities. I hope I've given you a, a broad feel for accounting. Now, the boring part. Let's get down to basics. Investors, creditors, and government agencies are interested in the financial health of corporations. This brings us to the question, how do we find out the financial position of a company? Let's go to the The financial position of a business enterprise is defined by the relationship of assets and liabilities to equity. Any event that affects assets, liabilities, or company's equity is referred to as a transaction. As you can see, the famous accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. You may be wondering, well, what are these assets? What are liabilities? What is equity? Let me give you some basic definitions which you need to know before we proceed. Let's start with assets. What are assets? Assets are anything of monetary value to a business. Businesses acquire assets to make products that they can sell and make money. So the formal definition of assets is anything that can provide, now keywords, future economic benefits to a corporation. Let me repeat that. Anything that can provide, here come the keywords, future economic benefits to a corporation. Here in front of you are examples. Assets could be factory, could be buildings, could be motor vehicles, and of course, cash. As I said, anything that can provide future economic benefits. Do you agree that the items in front of you provide benefits to a company? Now, look at the diagram. I want you to spend a few minutes, take a pencil and paper, and write for each whether you think it's an asset or not. Stop this recording, do this, and then we can proceed. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this. What did you say? Let's take the first one. Cash is an asset. If you said asset, you got it. Land is an asset. Retained earnings is not an asset. The answer is no. Retained earnings, let me repeat, is not an asset. They are the cumulative earnings of the business. They are treated as part of equity. We'll come to that later. Patent is an asset. They don't look like assets but they are assets. This is because they do provide future economic benefits to a company. What about the next one? Buildings is an asset. Note payable is not an asset. Let me repeat, no, not an asset. It's actually the opposite. 
payable means you owe money. You don't get money. So it's a liability, and we'll talk about that later. Right now, all you need to know is that it's not an asset. Inventory. What did you say? If you said asset, you got it right. The next one might surprise you. Employees are not assets. Let me repeat: they are not assets. Businesses don't own employees. They own buildings. They own land. They own inventory, but they don't own employees. So it's not considered an asset. Now here's another set of items for you. Stop this presentation for a few minutes and write down which you think are assets. Once you have done that, we can restart. Okay, are you done? Let's start. Accounts receivable is an asset. It represents future money to to be obtained from a customer. Machinery is an asset. They generate revenue for a company. Prepaid expenses. This might surprise you. Are assets. They are money that is prepaid. Before any service is received, so it's treated as an asset, since an external party owes the company a service. Next one: expenses are not assets. We'll discuss that later. Furniture is an asset. The next one might surprise you: revenue is not an asset. Why is that? Because the definition of an asset, if you remember, is something that brings future benefits. Keyword: future. Revenue relates to current benefits. Now, I want you to do a little exercise for me. Here it comes. I have given you six transactions. For each, tell me which asset is affected, and then tell me if the asset increased or decreased as a result of the transaction. Stop this now and do this exercise. Once you are done, we'll start the presentation again. Are you done? Here are the answers. Have a look. Do these correspond with your answers? Let me go through each one. The first, a company paid fifty thousand dollars for advertising. Which asset is affected? It's cash, because the company paid money. And cash decreased. Second. <clears throat> the company bought eighty-five thousand worth of equipment on account. Which asset was affected? Equipment, and it increased. Third, the company furnished its offices by purchasing assets worth twenty-five thousand for cash. Which asset affected? Well, two, furniture. And it increased, and cash, and it decreased. The next one, if you got this right, then you're very good in accounting. The company opened a store. Which asset affected? The answer is no asset account was affected, because opening a store is not a transaction for accounting purposes. The answer is nothing. Fifth. Purchase thirty thousand inventory on account. The asset that's affected is inventory. It increases by thirty thousand. The last one. The answer is 
two types of assets were impacted, inventory and cash. Inventory increased and cash decreased. Are you comfortable up to now? Did you get all of these correct? If so, you could be potential future accountants. Now, let's proceed. Liabilities. Liabilities are everything owed by a business to outsiders. These outsiders are called creditors. So liabilities are bad for a business. What's the definition? Liabilities represent keywords probable, future, sacrifice of economic benefits. Let me repeat. These are the keywords, probable, future, sacrifice of economic benefits. This means that the company will lose money in the future. A little exercise for you. Which of these are liabilities? Stop this presentation and try this exercise. I'll give you the answers once you are done. So, stop now. Are you done? Okay, let's start. Common stock. Answers no. It's not a liability, it's part of equity. We'll come to that later. Interest payable. I'll give you a hint. Anytime you see the words payable, it's a liability. It means you owe money to someone in the future. So, what's the next one? You got it. Taxes payable, it's a liability. What's the next one? I'm sure you got it now. Salary payable is a liability. Note payable is a liability. Account payable is a liability because you owe money in the future. Accrued bills. Accrued is an accounting term. It means owing, owing. So this accrued means money owed for salaries, bills such as utility, and so on. So anytime you see the word accrued, it's a liability. Have you got it? Okay, let's do some exercises. For each of these, I want you to tell me if a liability was affected. If so, did the liability increase or decrease? Stop this presentation now and do this exercise. Restart once you are done. Here we go. Number one, a company borrows 85000 from a bank. Is a liability affected? Yes. Since the company owes money to the bank, you call it loan payable, the liability increased. Two, the company paid 5000 towards the loan. Was the liability affected? The answer is yes. The liability that's the loan payable decreased since the company paid part of the loan. The liability decreased because they owe less money to the bank. Third, the company purchased 8000 in office supplies on account. Was a liability affected? Yes. The company bought an account so it owes money to a supplier. The supplier is called accounts payable. It's a liability, and here the liability increased. Received a utility bill for services. Is a liability affected? 
Answer is yes. The liability is increased by the amount of the bill. This is the money owing to a supplier. So the answer is yes. You can call the liability utility payable and it increased. Are you comfortable up to now? If so, let's proceed. Now we are coming to the more important part of this module. We did assets, we did liabilities, now let's go to equity. Equity is the owner's contribution to a business. Let me go through this very slowly. It's very important, so take your time on this. Look at the screen in front of you. Equity is the owner's contribution to a business. How do you become an owner? Generally, the owner buys the company's common stock. So stockholders are owners of a company. The more stock you have, the more say you have in the business. For example, Bill Gates is the owner of Microsoft. He owns the majority of the stock. So equity comprises common stock. There's another element of equity. It's called retained earnings. What are retained earnings? Retained earnings are accumulated profits of the business. Let me give you an example. Let's say you just started a business this year. Say the profits are 10000 At the end of the year, you put 10000 in a special account called retained earnings. Next year, let's say your bottom line profit was 30000 What do you do with the thirty? You take it and put it in a special account called retained earnings. So what's the balance of the retained earnings now? It's 10 from the previous year and 30 from the current year, so it's 40, and so on. Retained earnings are considered part of equity because it belongs to the owners. Remember, the profit of a business belongs to the owners. Now, we come to another accounting formula. This is where we start with the formula, the real deal. First accounting formula. Net worth of a company is assets less liabilities. This is a very important formula. You'll need this formula from right now to the end of the course. Why is net worth equals assets less liabilities? Let me give you an example. Let's say you have assets of 100,000 and liabilities of 40. When you sell your business, you hope to get 100,000 for the assets, but don't you have to pay off the liabilities of 40? So what are the owners left with? The 100,000 less 40, which is 60. So net worth of a company is assets less liabilities. Are you comfortable with this formula? If so, let's go to the next one. Profit of a business is equal to revenue less expense. What is revenue? Revenue is money generated by the business. It could be from sales, that's a sale of goods. It could be from providing a service. Or it could be interest received from investments. So what's revenue? It's money generated by the business, keyword in the normal course of business activity. Keyword normal. Money generated by the business in the normal course of business activity. 
What are expenses? Expenses relate to all costs necessary to run a business. What are these costs? It could be salary, rent, interest paid on loans, insurance, and so on. The last one I have, if you look at your slide, is cost of goods sold. It's the cost of the goods you bought. I do need to spend a, a minute on this because it's important. Follow me through this very carefully. Let's say you spent $10,000 on some goods. You sold the goods for $30,000. You spent ten. You sold it for thirty. So what's your revenue? It's 30000 The inventory of 10000 which you bought is initially an asset. When you sell it, it gets converted to an expense. You have to call it a name, so you call it cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is an expense. Cost of goods sold is the cost of the inventory you sold. Now, let's put this together. As you can see, revenue less expense gives you profit. That profit goes into an account called retained earnings. Every year, when you make a profit, you stick it in there. Retained earnings together with common stock, is part of the equity of the business. Now, let me make it a little hard for you. Look at the diagram in front of you. Which of these are considered to be equity? Or equity, as the British say. Try this. I'll give you a few minutes. Stop the presentation till you are done. So, did you get these right? Let me go through the answers. Cash? No. Cash is an asset, it's not equity. Retained earnings? Answers yes. Retained earnings is part of equity. Common stock? Answers yes. Common stock is part of equity. Patent? No. It's an asset. It's not part of equity. Buildings? Answers no. Building is an asset. It's not equity. Accounts receivable? Answers no. Accounts receivable is an asset, not equity. Let's look at the next two, and this is very important. It's, in fact, it's so important that I'll repeat it. If you look, revenue is considered part of equity. Expense is considered part of equity. Why? If you remember, revenue less expense give you profit. Profit goes into retained earnings. Retained earnings is considered part of equity. So, you can consider revenue and expense as part of equity. Revenue has a positive impact on equity. Expense has a negative impact on equity. Does that make sense? So, right now, just remember, revenue and expense is part of equity. Here's another exercise for you. Identify for each transaction the type of equity involved, then indicate if the company's equity is increased or decreased. Take your time. This is very important. Stop now, do this exercise, and then proceed. 
Once you're done, I'll give you the answers. Are you done? Let's take the first one. The company sold 1,000 shares of common stock for 30. So the answer is, what type of equity was affected? It's common stock. And the impact on equity was positive, plus 30. The company paid 8,000 for rent. What got affected? Expense. The impact on equity Negative 8,000. Remember, expenses are bad for equity. Sold goods generated 30,000 in revenue. What did you put? The answer is revenue. Impact on equity is positive. Revenue has a good impact on equity. The company paid 5,000 on loan from its bank. And this is what's in accounting called the shaft. You paid 5000 Impact on equity was nothing. Why is that? Because only assets and liabilities were affected by this transaction. So the impact on equity was nothing. This finishes module one. The purpose of the module was to explain what assets are, what liabilities are, what revenues are, what ex expenses are, and to explain the concept of equity. If you're comfortable with this, you can go to module two.